Hey there, hey there, hey there, friends. Welcome to Off the Cuff with SDJ. That is me. Come on in, say hello. Let's get this beautiful event started today with Off the Cuff. Uh, I am so sorry I missed you guys yesterday. Um, I know you got a little uh, a little review of one of our um, really great interviews, but um, I was in the dentist chair yesterday. You know how many of us want to be in the dentist chair. And you know when you get in the dentist chair, it's not really like you can just get out on time. So that didn't work out so well. But anyway, hey, guys, I'm here today. I'm excited to see you. Come on in. Say hello. Let me know you can hear me okay, that you can see me okay. Uh, and then I am going to introduce you to our beautiful guest who's doing an amazing, um, spreading an amazing message out in the world that, of course, I am a big, big fan of all positivity and uh, and really getting that kind of connection and reminding people that you have choices and all that good stuff. So in just a few minutes, I'll introduce you to Dr. Linda Ulrich and uh, we will get started. So let's see who's with me. Hello, Marsha. Hey, Kathy. Hi, friends. Hey, Colleen and Anne and Serata. Hi, Maria, Johnny, Jessica, Teresa, Kathy. Considy, hello, hello, friends. Good to see you all. Hi, Jay. Hey, Janelle. Hey, Agatha. So, my friends, as you're jumping on and saying hello, if you know somebody that you think might want to join us and watch this as well, please hit that little share button at the bottom and share it on your page or with your community. If you know somebody that loves positivity, then tag them right here in the comments and uh, let them know what we're doing. All right. Are you all ready? Let's go ahead and bring on. Hello, Dr. Linda. Hello. It's nice to be here, Sunny. It's really great to see you. I'm really excited to share the work that you're doing out in the world with my audience. And um, I love your fire behind you. Oh, I, I feel very lucky. This is a great place to sit. It's, it sure is. It's it sure is. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If I was in a cold area, I would be sitting in front of the fire too, but I probably wouldn't look so good. I'd be underneath the blankets. And <laughs> so, all right, Dr. Linda, I just want to share um, with our audience a little bit about um, who you are and what you're doing, and then we're going to jump in. Okay. Great. Great. All right, my friends. So introducing Dr. Linda, Dr. Linda Ulrich, she is the founder of Ever Widening Circles, EWC, a positive global media company that began publishing articles about remarkable insights and innovation going uncelebrated in 2014. Now she's on a mission to bring us all together around an enormous wave of goodness and progress well underway in the world that almost no one knows about. The conspiracy of goodness. I love that. The conspiracy of goodness. With a best selling book, a beautiful app, a podcast, an education website, TEDx talk, and as the host of the first Conspiracy of Goodness Summit, she is being interviewed by news media markets that reach millions of people around the world. Dr. Linda's work proves unequivocally that it is still an amazing world. Amen, sister. Thank you so much for being with us. I was delighted that we connected. I love it. And I, I, I love um, the conspiracy of goodness that almost no one knows about. However, if we're being interviewed by all of these places, then the word is spreading for sure. It is. The word is spreading. And and man, doesn't it need to spread? Like I, I, I don't watch the news. I don't watch the news for 20 years. And one of the reasons that I don't watch the news is because of exactly what your point is. Like the positive messages, which there are plenty of, just aren't there. It's just harping on the negativity and the fear and, and all that heaviness. So how did this idea for you, because I've had this idea, so I'm wondering how you've brought it to fruition to create a media outlet that's that's helping to, to, to get the message of just pure goodness in the world. Well, I think a lot of us have that, that those moments in our lives when we say, somebody's got to do something about this. I mean, how many times? Yeah. I thought, where is it, is somebody reporting about the goodness in mm -hmm. happening in the world? So um, I've been a dentist for uh, for two decades when I started Ever Widening Circles, wow. and I know that comes out of left field. <laughs> I heard you mention that you. I know I was at the dentist yesterday. That's why I missed my show. <laughs> yeah. But the reason why that's relevant is because my husband and I are both dentists, and we're from a small wood midwestern town. We grew up in in Illinois, and we live we've lived in Vermont all these years another rural town. And we know that relationships are 
everything to feeling like you're truly working in the service of others. So we really know our patients. And over the years of 2010, 11, 12, 13, it was already starting to look dark. Yeah. And I noticed I was having these conversations with patients who I'd known for, for decades as really chipper, um, you know, upbeat people. And we were getting in these downward spiral conversations. You know, the ones about how the whole world is going to heck in a handbasket. Yep. And I kept saying, somebody's got to do something about this. So the side story is that my husband and I are, have lived abroad and, and we drug our kids all over the world since they were toddlers in really bleak places. They've slept on plywood in Tibet and gotten lost in the Andes. And, and what they saw in the world was amazing. They've seen generosity among people that have nothing. They've seen people have the, the most incredible ingenuity to, to make things work. And I realized that ordinary people were never going to know about that side of humanity if all we had was what we see on the nightly news. Yeah. And then just throw social media in there and that all, whole negativity. And so it was building, it was building like these things that live in our hearts and start to take root. And um, one day I got an email from a young boy um, from a foxhole and, and he thought of me in this darkest moment and, because I'd, I'd always been somebody in his life who found something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I snapped, I just said, you know, I've got to find this young man someplace that he can find goodness and progress and innovation and know that it's still an amazing world. And, I, and so I dove into the internet <laughs> mm -hmm. for two weeks. I could think of nothing more than some, finding some place with no politics and no commercial agenda and something that's relevant to people of any generation. Cause he was 19 years old. Sure. Yeah. Um, I couldn't send him my favorite list of Ted talks at that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and after about three weeks, as you might imagine, I found there was no place, no place on the internet where you could get signs of goodness and progress without politics or commercial agenda. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> boom, boom, I built it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found a nice young, young local, lo local, local man to help me do the technical end of it. And I started writing one article every day about something happening in the world uh, that no one would know about to prove it's still an amazing world. And uh, before we knew it, we had 160,000 Facebook fans all over the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. So did you, um, Dr. Linda, did you did you just do some research? Did, it, did you have people start kind of, I would imagine that as the community grew, then you would have Absolutely. people that would say, hey, I saw this, I heard about this, and, and help direct mm -hmm. it. But in the beginning, that was you, right? That was me. It was a passion project. Yeah. So what really turned this into something that became a, a you know, a, a foundational source of goodness for everyone was that I had a daughter who was very smart and very worldly who graduated from Harvard. And when she graduated, she could have worked anywhere in the world. And she sat me down on the porch, like, like only a 22 year old could gave me a big lecture about how rinky dink the website was. And she said, mom, I think you're onto something. I'll join you if you'll invest in, in doing it right, getting a really professionally built website and then just going off in directions that were, you know, contemporary for 2015. Sure. And uh, so she joined me and now we have the podcast and the education site and the summit and all the things. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So she, does she, you both do interviews and things like that, or she's behind oh, yeah. the scenes and you're in front of the scenes? Or you no. Yeah, she, no, she's a force. She's a force. She's a lovely person who cares deeply about the world, but she's, she's very, she's got that millennial savvy that, that mm -hmm. I don't have. Mm -hmm. What I usually say, Sunny, is that um, I get to be right about 20% of the time. Yeah. Because yeah. She, she, she has this team of seven, seven young people. And I always tell them that it's like the earth is rolling towards us very slowly. And they're lined up on the horizon and they can see over it. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't see that. Mm -hmm. but, there, but what I can see is the 60,000 foot look from behind. Sure. So I've got that scope of time. Mm -hmm. And they're, and I'm perfectly willing to be right 20% of the time and them 80. And it's a great, it's a great marriage of. Yeah. Of experience. That's mm -hmm. perfect combination really, because the, you know, I, I, I hear a lot about, you know, people saying, you know, oh my gosh, the millennials and they're, they're so entitled mm -hmm. and, and all of these things. And, and I have a, a 23 year old son and I have a 30 year old son and 
I don't see that. I, no. I see, I mean, I'm not saying there, of course, there's, there's, you know, a variety of people out in the world, but I see um, people that are invested and that are interested and that are, are looking for change and wanting to make change. And maybe they don't always make the best choice every time to do it, but did we, you know, like, you know, we perpetuated a lot of issues. So. Yes. Yes. And every generation can bring something to the table as we go forward. Um, and that is what it's about going forward. I mean, yes. even if we're falling forward, yes, yes. it's about, it's going to be their world sooner or later. And so um, the best I feel like I can do is bring the wisdom of experience and the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I am a naturally incredibly curious mm -hmm. connector. Yeah. So my role in the, in the project has always been to connect with thought leaders around the world. And, um, and I, and I, I love people. So, you know, I'll be talking to the world's authority on killer whales one day and the guy who's figured out how to save the rainforest with old cell phones the next. Well, because and, it all qualifies under goodness. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's such a fun, um, that's why I do this. Cause I love people and I love learning about different, different things people are doing. And, um, and I, so I think it's, I just think it's great. Now, how did you come up with the title, Ever Widening Circles? I'm yeah. curious about that. There's a beautiful poem. Um, my brain doesn't work in, in memorization. It just, I'm a very, listeners would love Rilke poems. Um, it's very short and mm -hmm. it's called Widening Circles. And it's, mm -hmm. it talks about, you know, um, I, I'll, I'll finish this, this rotation around the sun and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll embrace um, all that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And um, am I a, a falcon? Am I a song or am I a storm? Mm. Hmm. That's awesome. And, oh, I got goosebumps saying it. Mm -hmm. there, there's more to the poem in between sure. that. But I really, really remember thinking the gist of that poem was that that, that we all are probably all three of those at some point. And, um, and I'd had just the right life experiences to be all three. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, with this website. So um, I really think that if we're self, if we have some self insight, we know that everything we do goes out in ever widening circles. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we think about that before we speak, or before we hit send on a text or a social media post, um, we could change the world if more of us really thought of our actions and what we say and do in those terms. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, because I think we, we, a lot of what I see on social media and I, I've been speaking up as much as I possibly can using this, this um, format because mm -hmm. so many people want to continue to complain about the narrative that's out there instead of change the narrative themselves. So if we're complaining about it, we're still part of the problem. And so just like you said, I'm going to do something. Let's do something. Right. Yes. I love yeah. it. Um, don't don't let, it, let us end this interview without me help giving people some tips about social media. I uh, won't. Well, that, that's exactly what I'm going to. You got different <laughs> different tips to shift um, the the changes you see on the screens. So you've got shift one, two, three, and four. So I definitely want to hear about those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I I have a book that published on September first um, that I was going in a whole different direction, pecking away at a book. And in April, once the, the pandemic hit, I, I had a thought leader call me up and say, Dr. Linda, <laughs> don't you have something to say about this? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you know, I did. Yeah. I did. There was so much negativity in there and it was, we were driving it. We, we didn't realize that we were feeding it ourselves with our clicks. Yeah. And, and I, so I wrote a book that teaches people some secrets about the internet that um, can vastly improve the, what we see on the screens in our life. Mm -hmm. Because um, I, I got a really impressive on you that I went from ordinary web user, like I could order a pair of boots and post them on Facebook for my kids to, to, to where I am now. I, in eight years, I really had to absorb a lot about how the internet works and it's shocking. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely shocking. And so the book is is telling ordinary people like I once was these four shifts that we can do to change how our algorithms serve us mm -hmm. and change what gets to the top of the internet um, as a whole as well. Yeah, yeah. So tell tell us what they are because so the book is called Happiness Is an Option, mm -hmm. 
And um, you learn the four simple shifts that allow you to thrive in chaotic times and um, know how to usher in a new era, which is uh, like, hello, we're ready. Um, yeah. I'm ready anyway. I think a lot of our audience is ready. So, but I, I love this because I think um, if, if people can recognize, like I hear a lot of people say, oh my gosh, there's so much negativity and, and on, on social media and everything. And I'm like, I don't see, I, I've seen it, but I don't see that much. All right. So there's a reason for that, Sunny. And, and I don't either. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you, you, as a professional, you, you know this, but a lot of ordinary people um, like me, I, I consider myself like, I think we're all ordinary people right outside. Our, ordinary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outside our zone of expertise, we're yeah. all ordinary people. So when I say that I'm talking about myself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that the internet, um, it was invented in, let's say the internet began in 1993 when there was about 130 websites. And in 10 years, by 2003, there were 40 million. So when you really think of the scope of that leap in 10 years, yeah. something had to become the organizing principle yeah. because the internet was invented um, uh, by engineers who ran into work every day thinking they could connect people in crazy new ways and they could connect us to information. So that was the goal, was to connect us to information and each other seamlessly in a better and better way. But here we were with 40 million websites in just 10 years. So something had to become the organizing principle and it became our attention. Mm -hmm. Nothing else matters on the internet, nothing. Not goodwill, not hard work, not thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. Nobody who's truly helpful is rising to the top of the internet. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting and holding our attention. Yeah. So then if you know that much about the internet, um, you'll, you'll, you probably have heard about the, the, the uh, Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. Have mm -hmm. you heard about this stuff? I've okay. heard of it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. So that goes much deeper into what I just told you, much, much deeper. It's essentially, I would recommend it. It's not more doom and gloom. That's why, I didn't go, that's why I didn't watch it. Cause I'm like, I oh my gosh, I already know. I don't want to hear all that again. I know. Now uh, it's, uh, I really encourage parents. I do a lot of speaking for parents groups and podcasters that are especially into parenting and stuff. And I tell people this, if you feel that your kid is responsible enough or whatever adjective you want to use there to own a cell phone that connects them to all the good and bad in the world, then I think the prerequisite to giving a kid that kind of responsibility is that we sit down and we watch that, that documentary together and we talk about it, have a serious talk. It is simply the people who created the internet, all the things we know and love, like the infinite scroll or um, the algorithm that serves you the next video on YouTube or the like button. It's all the people who actually invented these things who now don't work for those companies. Mm -hmm. So Telling, they can talk. Got yeah. it. Yes, it's all of them sitting on a simple bar stool in a warehouse. That's it. That's all. <laughs> and they tell the story of how the like button was invented or the infinite scroll. And then they tell us what happened after that. And mm -hmm. almost every single good thing that happened to, uh, that became part of the internet for a good reason, with good intentions, like that algorithm, that was supposed to be a shortcut. That was supposed to do us a favor. But now what it does is if we get even a little curious about something negative or horrific or, you know, morbid curiosity or anger, if we click on any of those things, that tells our algorithm what to serve us next. Bring it on. So back to your point, if you are, are not letting yourself be triggered on the internet out of curiosity, boredom or anger, if you yeah. never click on things, and I always say A, B, C mode, anger, boredom, or morbid curiosity. If you that's never do good, that. That's good. Let's say that because I think that's important, guys. Of The reason you oftentimes click on things, A, B, C. So anger, boredom, and curiosity. Right. And I don't mean like good, healthy curiosity, which right. I'm like a major curious person. Like obsessive but, curiosity. Or yeah. If you see like the blobfish or a picture of an anaconda snake with a human form in it or you know, any of the obvious clickbait that's right. on social media, like weird photographs or strange, scary headlines, mm -hmm. 
that's morbid curiosity. Yeah. So if we stopped clicking out of anger, boredom, or, or uh, morbid curiosity, you know when people are sitting at their lunch table and, and clicking like that, staying a millisecond and then moving on? Yeah. Well, that's giving a vote. Mm -hmm every piece of content you click on. Not only do those content creators get rewarded for your click, because that's all that matters on the internet is the click. Nobody's paying attention to how long anybody stays. I, that, I was shocked by that when I got the, the website going. People just kept asking me how many views I had and no one said, how long does anyone stay? Mm -hmm. um, so, if we, um, let, me, let me start, if we know that much, I, I, I've got to throw one more thing in. There's no bad intention here, Sonny. We are hardwired for hundreds of thousands of years to search for signs of danger and disorder in our environment. That's yeah. part of our brain called the amygdala, yeah. and it's on 24 seven. Have you ever sat straight up in bed and thought you smelled smoke? That's because your amygdala was on or, you know, you get that creepy feeling of somebody standing behind you in the line of the movie. All those are, are this wonderful, wonderful place in our brain called the amygdala that's looking for signs of disorder and danger. Uh, we can't escape that, and it's on when we get on the internet. Mm -hmm. so, um, so just the fact that we're here means, uh, <laughs> means our ancestors 40,000 years ago were really good at bad news. Mm -hmm. They paid attention when somebody told a story sure. around the fire, right? Mm -hmm. They said, oh, there's really good berries on that second hill, but don't go there. There's a saber-toothed tiger. Mm -hmm. You know, our ancestors listened to bad news and did well with it. Mm -hmm. But what we have, there are no saber-toothed tigers. Right. Okay. So let me, with that much said, let me go through the four shifts. They're as easy to remember as the ABC mode. The first thing we've got to do is pause. We just, if, when that amygdala is in the driver's seat and we're scrolling, scrolling, we're picking up signs of danger and disorder and we want to click on it to see if it applies to us. Do I need to be worried about this? Is this gonna affect my children? Is, is this my politics or is this my religion under siege or anything? We're looking for signs. Okay, so number one, pause before you click on anything because okay. someone is counting every click you make. Mm -hmm. Your click is a vote. Yep. And even if the thing you clicked on is leaving you fearful, sad, or whatever, your algorithms are counting every click you make or a content creator is, and you will just get served more and more of that. Yep. So Sunny, if you and I don't see very much of the craziness that people say is on the internet, it's because somehow, um, by a gift of serendipity or maybe our impulses, we realized that there was a game being played with our emotions and sure. we stopped clicking on it a long time ago. I had a friend contact me the other day, said, your book is amazing, but I never see it. She says, all I click on are things with Britney Spaniel and food. I mean, <laughs> she's a big dog rescue person. And so she, she just loves Britney Spaniels and, and food. I've heard that people are like cat videos. I'm good. It's a, it's all good. I'm like, yeah, that you can. I, I don't particularly watch cat videos, but hey, if that floats your boat, then that's great. Yeah. So the first shift is to pause before you click on anything. Mm -hmm. Now the second shift is ignore more. Ignore anything you see that might lead you leave you to be angry, um, sad, or uh, you know, feel like you're, you're under siege, anything about scarcity, because people are wanting to trigger those really serious impulses in us. It makes us stay. It yeah. gets our clicks. Yeah. So pause is the first one. Ignore more is the second one. And the third one is seek signs of goodness and progress. Mm -hmm. For now, the internet will not bring it to you. Right. If you're waiting for a better worldview, to show up on the internet, it's just not built that way. But you can seek signs of goodness and progress. Um, and, and as you train your algorithm that that's what you want to see, it will start sending it to you. Sure, sure. And then the fourth shift is to share it. You know, when we see on Facebook, this is a really key point too. I'm just picking on Facebook, but because it, this applies to almost all sure. the social media. If I see something on Facebook where the neighbor kid 
um, raised $400 for the Humane Society. Don't just like that. We have to share it yeah. because the like means almost nothing mm -hmm. as far as giving um, elevation and, and um, giving some what I call link juice to the goodness. Um, if we share that, it's going to wind up in front of maybe a thousands of people mm -hmm. and um, not only inspire the, the other 10 year olds that's, that might see it, but also your neighbors. And, and that's the kind of wave of goodness and progress we can each start. When we see goodness and progress, share it because content creators are amazingly interested in what we share. Sure, sure. Well, and, and I think too that you know, if there's something that you're watching that you appreciate, that lifts you up, that makes you feel good, then when you share it with others, you're blessing not only the others that you're sharing it with, but you're blessing the person that created it by mm -hmm. spreading the light. You know, it's like I think of us as lighthouses and it's like we're spreading the light and you can you, you get to spread whatever you want. You can spread the dark or you can spread the light. I always like to remind people, and, and again, I, I think that this is probably something your listeners um, have, have been focusing on, um, because I, I looked into your work and I, I love what you're doing. Thank you're you. really elevating. Um, so what we give our attention to expands. Yes. Yeah. This, I, uh, I was interviewed by lots and lots of news agencies after the TED Talk came out. And we'll talk about that in a minute too. Uh, but, um, and they, everybody wanted to know around the opening of the new year, what was my best piece of advice for starting the new year in a different way? Because most of us wanted 2020 to be gone, gone, gone forever. Mm -hmm. And I would say, pay attention to what you're giving your attention to. This is everything about what comes next. If we give our attention to the shouting and the chaos builders and the people that are not thoughtful, mm -hmm. that's what will expand. But we have so much power on the internet. Uh, uh, we are not victims um, right. on the internet. The very rules the, uh, that I mentioned about how the internet is, is made can be used as a double-edged sword. We can either elevate all the craziness and the chaos and the mean people, or we can start elevating people with good intention. And I think that once about 25% of people around the uh, around the planet realize that the internet is playing a giant game with our emotions, yeah. there will be a tipping point. Scale, yes, I yeah. agree. Actually, that's when I started this um, this podcast was um, April 1st. It was right after uh, we went into lockdown, and I realized that there was so much fear and anger and. Uh, worry and judgment, all the stuff that was being thrown around. And I said, I, I got to do something. And I didn't know what to do. I just knew that, hey, if I show up and I say, hey, I'm going to shine a light, I'm going to interview cool people, I'm going to have some fun, I'm going to share some insight, that at least I'm doing my part in being the change that I wanted to see in the world. So I, I so love don't you guys love this? It's so great. And uh, what I really love, see, you've got that doctor mentality. Sunny does not have that where you have like four simple, easy steps, like one word each. I have like paragraphs because I'm a talker. So I love the simplicity of um, of your steps because it helps people. And I, and I love what you said, Dr. Linda, of, um, you know, I always say, put your attention on your intention. So if your intention is to create more upheaval then that's where your attention is going there or vice versa and, and we're saying the same thing and there is power in our choices yeah you know um if i will i'll give you another just i, I love to give people like ugh, i'm i'm a task oriented person and and while i i read philosophy endlessly and all that lovely soft stuff i i, I like to give people a practical way forward because for gosh sakes most of us want to do more than just survive. We want to thrive. Right. <laughs> you got to have right. a plan. Okay. So here's the tip. Um, when you're looking at something and you, you're thinking you're going to click on it, and then you might pause and remember that your click is a vote. Yeah. That is actually what it is. It is giving link juice to that thing you touched, no yeah. matter what you do. It's a click, a swipe, a, a like, a, a comment, anything is giving what I call link juice. and and 
taking it away from other things that might make the world a better place. So here's the quick tip. Ask yourself this one thing when you're trying to decide whether you should click on it. Do we need more of this? That's the question I ask myself. It may be something that I'm, I'm, it may be my team politically, or it may be my, my issue that I want to support. But let's say you're looking at something on the internet that, that is something that appeals to your team, whatever is your sensitivities, right? But it's just, it's just, it's just rage and it's just zeal. And it, it really doesn't look thoughtful. It looks like somebody just went off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even though they might be saying something that you may agree with. Sure. Ask yourself that question. Mm -hmm. Do we need more of this? Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. even if it's your team, the, the, the way the internet works is the loudest voices win. And we can change that by our choices, by our simple choices. So even when it's your team, just don't click on it. Don't give it link juice. And, and people will watch that and they will see if, if enough of us um, do this. So that's that's a little trick. You, if you don't know whether something's helpful or not. Yeah. yeah, that's a great question to ask yourself because it, 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 it pulls you into present moment too where you're not just in the uh, hustle and, and, and the energy of the fear and all of that. You actually, it's like you're taking that step back and taking a breath and going, Okay, let me let me engage in this versus right. just do autopilot. And you know, there's I think the only way that we can recover social media, and I think it will recover. Uh, what we've all got to remember, really, really um, important, is that the internet is just a human construct. Mm -hmm. It's like a hammer, mm -hmm. but a hammer can be used to build things yeah. or demolish things. Yeah. yeah, it's just a tool. Yeah. We get to decide when you pick up that hammer. You get to decide whether to build something wondrous yeah. or demolish your future. So I always tell people, you know, um, treat the internet like a tool in your life. Don't let it decide or determine or run or in any way um, impact your real life. Because we do, before the internet, we lived our lives. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. that sounds crazy simple, but... We lived our lives. Mm -hmm. we, we took all the time to celebrate a, a first birthday. We mm -hmm. we chatted for a long while on the phone with boyfriends or grandmothers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now the internet has this way that it's really pressing in on both our personal and our professional lives. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it's time to just realize that it's a tool. If you want to go to social media to see your sister's new baby, then go there, see the baby, Send a couple of great, um, a great lines and go help your kids with homework or go do some, some great passion project with that you've, that you found. Yeah. It's yeah. time to find, it's time to find the right place for the internet and our online lives. Yeah. And find, find some harmony in our world so that it's not extreme. I think on either side, there's so many people are like, oh my God, social media is horrible. And it's like, okay, there are some great benefits to yeah. Again, it's what you look for. You know, it's, it, you're looking for goodness, you'll find goodness. You're looking for for um, negativity, you'll find it. So you're going to attract to the level that you are, also. So, right. yeah. hey, tell us about your TED Talk, Dr. Linda. Okay, so <laughs> um, about two years ago, I was um, in full th full throttle. We'd written about thousands of thought leaders around the world who are doing the most extraordinary things. You can literally drop into any ever widening circles article, and it, it <laughs> it's going to send you away in a state of wonder. Mm -hmm. And these articles are about anything under the sun because we can get wonder out of topics we don't think we're going to enjoy. We we put a video in every single article that is breathtaking that will leave you changed. We if we have a pitching session every Monday and if these videos don't leave us all changed, we move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So um so after I'd really really been steeped in all these people of goodwill, I was talking to a thought leader one day and he said, "Dr. Linda, what you're doing is a is like the story of the conspiracy of goodness. You know that story, don't you? And I said, no, I have no idea. So he told me a story that changed the world. Um, it goes like this. 
So not many people know that um, during World War II, there was a small French village called Le Chambon that managed to save 3,000 Jews from concentration camps, mm -hmm. most of them orphans, and at great risk to their own lives. And with no organization, this village saved thousands for a couple of years. Okay, so I dove in to find out a little bit more about this story and the words conspiracy of goodness, those three words together. And I found that it first came uh, in a story told by a, a rabbi, Harold Schulweis. He was doing a talk in Europe about that chapter in history that he called the conspiracy of evil. Mm. And he says in a 1986 uh, piece he wrote for a, for a newspaper that after his talk, an old man stood up in the back of the room and said, why is it that everyone talks about the conspiracy of evil that was World War II? He said, do you think I could have hidden an entire family in my home without the active participation of the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors? Mm -hmm. No, the old man said, for every one person saved, there were seven who were <laughs> rescuers. It was, he said, a conspiracy of goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't tell that story without getting goosebumps head to toe. Yep. This is who we are. We are not what we see on the internet and social media right now. We are givers and doers and helpers and we have been for hundreds of thousands of years. The advent of the internet did not change that. Right. So, um, so I was turned on to the story in 2018, about this time, almost exactly to, uh, uh, 2018 in March. And that's it. I was rooted to the ground. I knew that everything we'd been writing about, every thought leader I'd spoken to, every person helping at the Humane Society, everybody dropping off food at the food shelf, everybody taking in a rescue dog. This is all of us being the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors. We don't have to go out and save the rainforest. Right. We can help Topher, Topher White by sending him our old cell phones. Mm -hmm. And he has found a way to save the remaining rainforest <laughs> using old cell phones. And we can do all the things like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors. So um, I knew this was a thing. And we, we started a movement called hashtag conspiracy of goodness. And then we've, we've, we've had a, the first conspiracy of goodness summit. And we just launched um, the conspiracy of goodness network last Friday. It's a place where people who are doing good in the world can come find each other. Mm. It's going to be like the best of the big four, um, the big four social media sites without all the angry, mean people. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, we need some place where everybody can be counted on to be thoughtful mm -hmm. and helpful. Yeah. It's those two things. So what's happened to people like me and you, I'm sure you've experienced this too. We just wade into these projects. Mm -hmm. And so like hundreds of thousands of other people who wade into something, they volunteer to be the head of the board of the mm -hmm. battered women shelter or something. And we don't, we don't have the resources. We don't have the training. We don't have the connections. Do we need a website? Who do we hire? Do I need a trademark lawyer? Do I, how do we find a PR firm? I, there's so many things that are up against most people trying to do good in the world. And so the Conspiracy of Goodness Network is a place where people who are doing that can come together, find each other, cross pollinate with the resources they've found that are good, books, talks awesome. courses um so this is the this is the thing with the conspiracy of goodness we're trying to elevate that concept mm -hmm. in every possible way we can mm -hmm. uh, we had a summit where we had eight terrific speakers we um um we're we're doing we've done the ted talk and we're we're really hoping that people will embrace this concept and um and share it wildly because sure. we can open a new era. Mm -hmm. uh, we can. It's time. I, so I don't think I'm saying they love the way it is right now. <laughs> right. No, no. So if they want to go watch the TED Talk, then they're going to go to... Exposing well, the Conspiracy of Goodness. Expo okay. Exposing the Conspiracy of Goodness. Okay. So, and 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 what you guys want to do, just like the, the steps here, is spread the word is share it. it, 
let other people know on all your pages, in your groups, in your communities that, yeah. hey, this is out there because that's the reality. It's really easy to spread the shitty news, really easy for people to do that. And part of what I think is is so important is if you if you have the awareness, then you, you got to We got to do better. We got to show up in a higher frequency than maybe what we were taught or the, what that we know, or when we just kind of check out and are just not conscious. So share, 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 share. Absolutely. Awesome. I Absolutely. love it. I love it. And then you have also, you have a, a free video um, that talks about those four shifts that I think would be helpful for, for some people now that you guys are kind of understanding how, um, you know, the internet is vying for your attention and how you vote, make your votes by the mm -hmm. things and the things that you watch so fourshifts.com yes it's actually a um it's actually a 10 minute read where oh, we read. yes yeah read. it's it, the book um happiness is an option goes into the the whole scope of those four shifts okay, perfect, perfect. And, but if somebody just wants to i need to do this i need to do it right i want a 10 minute read if you go to fourshifts.com it's yeah. right there, super simple. You can start seeing a different world on the screens in your life. That's I right. Love I love yeah. it. And if they want to find out more information about all of those things that you're doing, then they can go to Dr. Linda with a Y, L Y N D A dot com, correct? Yeah, Dr. with a D R yeah. dash. Yeah. L Y N D A dot com. Yeah, okay. I do a lot of public speaking. I, I love speaking to groups and you know, there's so many people in the conspiracy of goodness right now already out there. It's just an enormous wave of goodness and progress well underway that right now, especially, um, we need to to recognize that why we matter. Yeah. That's another thing. Right now we're getting tired. <laughs> and there are so many people doing the, the most wonderful things like the milkman, the mailman, and the neighbors. Oops, I pulled my earphone out. And... Um, so we need to come together and support each other and and really lift each other up because you know it's like a rising tide mm -hmm. if there's enough of us that do this sure, it will sure. lift all the boats in the harbor up yeah and it's what we're meant to do it, mm -hmm. i think it's truly who we are we're not we are not we did not survive through all of these years by not taking care of each other and not being supportive and not being the kind compassionate beings that we are that's not how we have survived so it's that we need to claim that and and stand in the power of that and not let um let ourselves be worn down by the heaviness the density the fear absolutely i it's love it uh, i love it linda that's so fun okay so Let's do a couple of off the cuff questions. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking, I think earlier, uh, earlier in the interviews, you said that you kind of dragged your kids all around, um, mm -hmm. all over the world. Tell me what the most, and I, I know these are hard when you've been all over. So you're like the most, okay, Sunny, how do I pick one? But what was the place that felt like you experienced the most, um, like the most sacred experience that you had with, with the kids. Cause I think mm -hmm. you know, I, I really believe that in order to understand the world in a greater way, you've got to travel the world. You've got to go to third world countries and then you'll come home and you'll appreciate the running water and, and, and the things that we have, you know, sometimes we just, you know, we just take it for granted. So what was the most sacred experience that you had or the place that you went to that just the, the sacredness of the space or the energy or the people that really moved you? So we traveled the world and we always had a we always had a mission. You know, we were going there to do good works. We were taking supplies to an orphanage or vi visiting and doing something nice for a, a place that was doing animal rehab or something. And along the way, because you can't just drag kids on good works all the oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> we did this thing called geocaching. Have you ever heard of this? I have. I have. Oh, isn't it the greatest? Oh, I haven't done it. Uh, well, my kids, okay. my kids did it, but I never I never oh. did it. <laughs> well, it's so great. So um, uh, always, whenever we traveled, we would look up ahead of time and have all these pages full of these coordinates. And back then, uh, cell phones were not international. You yeah. actually had to take a GPS with you. 
-hmm. And we would go off on adventures. We'd do whatever we went to do. And then we'd go off on adventures and do these great treasure hunts um, using the geocaching. And um, one day we were in a, 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 like a 1500 year old cemetery in Northern Ireland. And it had been one of those days, one of those days where the sun was just brighter than, than it should be. One of those days where the grass was greener and we'd hiked a, a <laughs> we'd hiked a mountain with the, with the kids. They were so little. And, you know, we, we went up there like it was an expedition and there were teachers passing us wearing flip flops. <laughs> no whiners. So by the end of the day, we're in this cemetery and it was, it was sort of, heavy and wonderful and it really gave you a, a the scope of time it felt like you were standing in the arc of time and so we were <laughs> we were trying to find this geocache that was in this 1500 year old cemetery very ancient and um and uh so there was this monument and we got closer and closer and the gps could tell you you're within 10 feet you're within 10 feet and the kids are all scurrying around looking under gravestones and stuff and there was a, a monument with a hole in it and my oldest daughter decided to stick her hand in the hole. Now we knew that there were no serpents on, on the island of Ireland, you know that. So I knew she wasn't gonna get a snake bite. So she sticks her hands in there and her father has gone around the other side of the monument, <laughs> unbeknownst to her, and, and stuck his hand in the other hole and he grabs her hand. <laughs> all three children went screaming and tumbling oh. back so <laughs> The reason why that mo moment is sacred is because those kids, now that was 20 years ago, they can all still, or maybe 18, they can still tell that story with, with a kind of joy mm -hmm. and presence that takes you back. And the yeah. reason why it's sacred is because that day, I remember it as feeling like, like I was more present for that day than any day in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me thereafter to be here now. Mm -hmm. A yeah, very yeah. famous philosopher, Ram Das, used to say, be here now. And to circle back to my message about the internet, I think that's what the internet is taking away from us. Yeah. It's taking away being present for others. Mm -hmm. So I always, I, 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 when I think of that, that day, that moment, I always think about, okay, be here now. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, and I, and I love Ram Das and all of his, uh, all of his messages were just so powerful. So powerful. Um, that's a great story. I love it. And I love, I love cemeteries. See, I would drag my kids to cemeteries all the time and they hated it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, why did you decide to be a dentist? Well, I'll tell you, my dad is, was a wonderful, um, good old fashioned family doc. He delivered your baby, took out your tonsils. He held your hand in death. He had the, he made house calls. He <laughs> took, met you at the emergency room and your kids ran the mini bike through a barbed wire fence and sewed him up. He was just one of those people that was in service to others a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And what we got, what, what was, what was left. Mm -hmm. So um, my, my husband and I were childhood sweethearts. We started dating when we were 14 and oh, we wow. both had the capacity to be physicians and we had the heart. But, um, but on one side of us it, in the neighborhood was Dr. Doolin, a dentist who drove in the driveway every day at 6.05 wearing the cardigan he had in, in high school still. He got to go to his kids' baseball games and coach soccer mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. my dad wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at that and my dad even, we, we thought of switching. Our first two years was, of, was like the medical students in the school that we went. Uh, and we sat down with my dad to say, well, we think we're gonna switch to medical school. And he said, don't do it. He said, as far as we know, dentists can still and will still be their own bosses. They will, they will not be beholden to insurance companies. You will get to spend time with people, I, I suspect like you saw me and that part that you're looking for in, in healthcare, you probably be able to do in dentistry, but it will go away in medicine. And he was absolutely right. <laughs> you know, over the years we, that, that kind of a doctor is bad and in the rear view mirror. Sure. So, yeah. So it was just a matter of the fact that Chuck and I are both artists. So we're, so if we had that side that was going to be good um, in dentistry. And then we, we knew that it was going to be like, Mm -hmm. It was going to be an opportunity to still celebrate the others. 
yeah. other people, all the wonder that is in other people, but we would be able to call our own shots. That's really interesting story. That's a good choice. Good choice. Good awareness. You know, sometimes we, we, we made good on it. Sunny, yeah. we did. We yeah. created a dental practice where we tried to find something to celebrate in people's lives with every single person. And we have worked very hard to keep the humanity in healthcare. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. We need that. We need that. Um, okay. And so last question, what is something that you've bought in the past year that is just like your favorite th thing that you just love? Doesn't, I don't care what it is, how much it is, just something mm -hmm. in the last year that you just love. Hmm. Think about this for a second. That's well, how off the cuff you see, because then you don't. I'm really a welder. <laughs> I make giant, giant metal sculptures, very big metal sculptures, dinosaurs, animals out of junk, um, out of junk uh, that we find in junkyards. And um, I recently got a very, very nice new piece of equipment that made that work a thousand times easier so I could be more creative and be less dangerous. <laughs> so I got I got a special welder's hat that I don't have to, um, that turns off automatically. It goes yeah. on and off when I strike the spark because yeah. I'd been too cheap to pay $350 for that kind of helmet yeah. for 30 years. I've been wearing the old kind that you <laughs> So that, that that's a funny answer to it. <laughs> I think it's great. My husband has one of those and uh, he he swears by it. So Yeah, I've been I've been holding off. I've been, you know, no, I don't need one of those. That's three hundred dollars. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's that part of my life that's creative and fun and, and yeah. God, it brought so much joy to that process that I I was unwilling to invest in before. <laughs> yeah, that's all well, I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you got it. Got it. Okay, I actually have one more question. Since you are a dentist, um, I have a teeth question. Okay. So, um, the water flossers. Yes. Yes, no, kind of. What do you think about them? Okay. So, um, so you got to think about the, the biology and the sort of like the physicalness of what the water is doing. So, the kind of um, bacteria that cause gum disease are called gram negative they can't live in the presence of oxygen. Okay. It breaks their cell walls. Mm -hmm. So if you think about way down deep in your gums, there's no oxygen there. So they're happy, they're having a great old time. And when you shoot water deep under your gums, H's and O's, that's all that's there. Mm -hmm. And so the, the concept of a water pick is, is completely biologically perfect. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta have some force with it or it won't go down under mm -hmm. the gums far enough. Sure. So I use a water pick every day instead of flossing. I, I, I floss probably four or five times a week because there's nothing like getting something right where the teeth, teeth touch each other. Yep. Water pick won't help that. But I use, I use, um, I use a water pick on the highest setting yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, because it, it's, it, you've got to get the water down under to, to those deepest parts in your gums. So the water, the, the handheld ones, you have to find one that ha that can, you can really ratchet up the, the, the force mm -hmm. right, or else right. it won't go far enough. I don't know enough about them. I use one that's hooked up in the shower mm -hmm. that you just unscrew. It's called, uh, I can't think of it right now. I, I, my girlfriend has one um, that she uses in the shower. So yeah. And boy, that comes out like a fire hose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I I have I bought everybody, my entire family, my grandchildren, my kids, my my brother and his girlfriend and his and his um their sons, everybody I bought water flossers for for Christmas. Perfect. And then this is what they said. They said I don't think they work as well. And I said, No, I've heard that they do for sure. They're really good. Like you still have to floss, but it's really good for you too. So oh, now I have, yeah, I have an official answer. I can go back to them with. Okay, and tell them to not be too wimpy. It's right. really about get it, cranking it up to as high a level as you can see it. Again, I don't know what brand they have or or how hard the water comes out, but you have to really get it so well, that it's not just- Of course, just Linda, they have the best one because okay. I bought the best one. <laughs> <laughs> then you've made the good choice. It, okay, it's now here's good. one more question about it. So if you are using it high and your gums are bleeding, you're, you're probably just, your gums are going to get stronger as you do it more often. Would that be the truth? Yeah. Okay. 
So the skin between your teeth should be the same toughness as the skin right here between your fingers. Mm. If you ran a string between your fingers and it bled, wouldn't you go, what's wrong with this? Or if you yeah. ran water really hard between your fingers and it mm. bled, you, you'd say something's wrong with my skin. Right. The skin between your teeth should be tough too. So yeah. if you're seeing bleeding, it's usually because the skin is really fragile and yeah. you've got gum disease. Okay. See, oh, that's, that's such, that's so good. This is a great combo because that's a good question to know. Oh, we can go on. You know, everybody needs to know about things like that too. Absolutely. So, all right, my friend, thank you so much. That was so great. You guys go and check it out again. Dr. Dash Linda with a Y.com. Go check out all of her information. Go, go be a part of ever widening circles and um, spread the positivity that ever is widening circles, ever yes. widening circles will change widening. your view of the world in the future. Yes, that's what we want. Thank you, friends. I know y'all enjoyed it. Go spread the love. Thank you, Dr. Linda. Appreciate it so much. Have a good one, guys. Bye. It was a delight. Thanks. You bet.